Hello everyone, my name is Diogo Sardini. Welcome to another video here on my channel. Today I want to share a breakdown on how I shoot my films whenever I get commissioned. But first and foremost, let me make a cup of tea. Probably many of you had the same questions and issues whenever dealing with clients, and it's not just a coincidence. Many of the commercial shoots, if not all of them, have tons and tons of people behind the scenes to make sure that everything goes as planned. Producers, people responsible for continuity, directors, assistants, assistants of assistants, and the list goes on and on. But how about if we don't work in a big production like this? How about if you have to look after everything, the so-called one-man band? Writing, cameras, lighting, sound, backups, ah, everything. We shall all agree that because of all these different responsibilities, the job becomes just more difficult, more complicated, because you have to look after everything. And sometimes we may forget why we hired in the first place, which was basically to capture a good story. Either a product shot that you're planning on getting, or perhaps a very emotional wedding shot, the so-called money shot. Sometimes because of all these different responsibilities, we do forget to get our main shots. So here's the deal. Here's what you should think next time that you hired and you don't have a million people to help you on a job. As an overall advice, I would say keep it simple. You're gonna be less likely to forget what shots do you need and less likely to waste your time on unnecessary shots. Nowadays, I use some very simple guidelines that help me to get what I need for my final product. So first, what a shoot shoot. Obviously, these will depend on the job and these tips are for jobs that are a bit more unscripted. So to start with, I've got main scenes. Main scenes, obviously, for instance, vows at a wedding or a really well lit uh, shot of your product, you know, main scenes that probably your client is already expecting that you're gonna film. Second, B-rolls. God knows how much like B-roll can save your life. Literally, if you film B-rolls, mo you most likely will succeed in your final film. B-rolls can be used in different ways, different times of your film, and they can definitely complete your final story. Behind the scenes. Well, many people won't agree with me when shooting behind the scenes. Many people think that behind the scenes is not really what will complement your story. And that's actually true. But maybe you can upsell your final product by selling behind the scenes. And besides, you can always use for your Facebook page. And that for me completes what I should shoot on an unscripted job. For instance, if the client didn't give me much information about something or there wasn't any sort of like briefing or guidelines provided before. So I usually follow these guidelines and I don't come back regretting that I did not get the specific shot that I needed. Right, so we know what to shoot next time that we go out and film something, but let's speak about how to shoot, how you can shoot something in order to not forget anything in the end of the day. Well, we all know that framing and composition are vital and I'm actually making another video about framing and composition, but sometimes, even though it's important, we just don't have the time to do them. So as a rule of thumb, just like we had three different tasks pretty much on what to shoot, I'm gonna follow the same guideline. I'm gonna have three different tasks on how to shoot something. You might already know what I'm gonna say, but it's always good to remember it, to perhaps write it down before you go out and shoot anything. So we have close-up shots, medium shots, and we also have wide shots. Obviously, we also have super close-ups or super wide. You have a variety of different types of shots. However, in order to not forget the main candid shots, you know, those really cool money shots that you always see in videos, remember, keep it simple. There is no need to go crazy if you don't just have the time. Don't screw up your whole project because of one gimbal shot, for instance. If your story requires a different type of shot and you have the time and you know that you can pull it off, go ahead, film it. The key here, or the goal, if you will, is to not go home disappointed because you didn't film something that you should have. How about my gimbal? How about my slider? Should I just ditch them? Should I just not use them? No, 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 no. That's definitely not what I meant. Just like your camera and your tripod, they tools to help you tell a story. But in my opinion, I would never prioritize a slider shot or a gimbal shot just because it will look cool in the end of the video. I will definitely prioritize a story. And if the story can be told using my camera and my tripod, that will be it. And that's it for today, guys. Here were my tips on how to never miss a shot again. If you follow this, I'm sure you're gonna be more content when shooting your next project. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button if you like this video. If you have any comments or questions or would like to share with us how you don't miss any shots on your day, please leave in the comments below. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao!